you know, different people that I've dealt with over the years, members of the media, a lot of them say about hockey, statistics don't mean everything. A player could have a, a very good statistical run over a few seasons, but he, he's not consistent. <coughs> now, this player is probably one of the most consistent contributors to the Boston Bruins of the 1970s. Came very close to winning the Stanley Cup uh, in that uh, 77 and 78 season. But he was a little bit too late for the uh, Or Esposito era and a little bit too soon for the future success of the Bruins in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Now, this guy has a respect of everybody in hockey, uh, you know, a respected uh, head coach as well. So today we're talking about the heart of Boston, or, uh, or you might say the, uh, the, the soul of the Bruins in the 1970s, Terry O'Reilly. Now, with a great Irish name like that, you think he came from, you know, uh, Weymouth, Massachusetts, or some other enclave, but actually he was born in Niagara Falls, Ontario. I didn't know until I was like 10 or 11 this guy wasn't an American player, or like what said, wasn't uh, born in the States. Now, he first came to major uh, Providence uh, in the Niagara Falls system, but he graduated to the Oshawa Generals program of the OHA. And after a very consistent season in 71, he was drafted by the Bruins, uh, right winger 6'1", 200 pound overall, uh, 200 pounds, 14 overall that year. Now, his last year season with the Generals, he had 65 points in 54 games. Now, when he uh, hit the minor leagues, he played with the Boston Braves of the IHL, had 17 points in 60 games. But by the 73 season, when he made the squad, a lot of people were saying this could be one of the better defensive uh, forwards and what he called protectors of the Bruins of the modern era. Now, by his, uh, his, uh, uh, his big season of 76, where he scored 50 points, he was consistently one of the team leaders in plus-minus. Uh, he came to... Uh, uh, major prominence again in 78, where he scored 90 points with 211 minutes in penalties, with a plus 42, and he had 15 points in the playoffs. Now, uh, 77, uh, of course, uh, Boston got to the final. 78, they got to the final, both losing to Montreal. Now, the uh, he was also captain of the Bruins during the 84 and 85 uh, season. Now, uh, in recognition of his talent, he, uh, the Bruins retired number 24 on October 24th, 2002. Now, O'Reilly was known for being a rough player. Him and Mike Milbury and some of the other uh, players like John Winsink and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Wayne Cashman. He would often rack up over 200 minutes on penalties and earn a nickname for uh, by the press. They call him Bloody O'Reilly. Now, his teammate, Phil Esposito, dubbed O'Reilly Taz. In reference to the Tasmanian Devil cartoon, which we saw in action when there was a game against New York in New York, where O'Reilly and some of the other Bruins went into the, the crowd and attacked fans that were attacking them. Now, uh, the Tasmanian Devil cartoon was a good description of O'Reilly's reckless style. Never, never would uh, lose uh, momentum, but he was he hit hard. He, he took the he took the hits. wasn't scared to drop the gloves. Now he was very protective of his teammates, uh, especially uh, Ray Bork. And he said when the Bruins retired O'Reilly's number 24, Bork noted that O'Reilly's banner hangs next to mine, protecting me again. Now, uh, like I said, top of his physical presence, uh, you know that scoring touch he had. He uh, he had 77 points in the 79 campaign, where Boston almost upset. Montreal in the semifinal round only lose on a late uh, game comeback by the Habs in Game 7 in Montreal. Now, he finished his career with 204 goals, 402 assists, and 606 points with a 212-plus minus average, plus minus uh, uh, total, amazing, and 2,095 minutes in penalties. Now, talking about an inf infamous incident on December 23rd, 79, uh, after the game was done, a Rangers fan allegedly rolled up a program tightly and hit Stan Johnson in the face, drawing blood, blood, then stole his stick and wielded it like a weapon. O'Reilly scaled the glass and charged into the stands. His teammates followed when other fans tried to intervene. Now, O'Reilly was suspended eight games for his part of the brawl, but any member of the uh, Bruins who, who jumped, uh, jumped the fence, as we say, 
It was a uh, almost like a a, a a real life sequel to the infamous slap shot uh, jumping into the crowd where the uh, Hansons were attacking uh, some of the anti Johnstown Jets. Now, when he started his coaching career, he became the replacement head coach of the Bruins during the '87 season and kept that job until '89 when he left to care for and spend more time with his son who was seriously ill with liver disease. In that time, he took the Bruins to the Stanley Cup Finals in 88, were defeated by the Wayne Gretzky-led Edmonton Oilers. O'Reilly was also assistant coach for the Rangers of all teams for two prior seasons prior to the NHL lockout. Now, I met O'Reilly in 2010 at a uh, Boston Bruins alumni game in Woodstock, New Brunswick. Nothing but a gentleman, uh, well-spoken. Him and Rick Smith and Rick Melton, Spent more time trying to explain why Ray Bork was, uh, you know, in the corner uh, kind of pouting. But O'Reilly, a uh, tremendous individual. I asked him uh, about some of the uh, the legends of the old Boston Garden. He said it was pretty well true. It was a, it was a rough place to play. But he, he noted, he said, the, the worst games weren't against Montreal. They had a big rivalry against Minnesota, the Rangers, uh, of course, uh, the Leafs, uh, and especially the Flyers. Now, he's also been kind of a uh, pop culture icon. In the Adam Sandler movie, Happy Gilmore, O'Reilly was mentioned as Happy Gilmore's favorite hockey player while growing up doing his, do his tough style, style of play. And, uh, you know, that's a shout out to Adam Sandler. Now, uh, because of his uh, quality of play and because of his tenacity, he was inducted into the Oshawa Sports Hall of Fame in 1990, not only for his time with the Generals, but... Uh, uh, his uh, overall uh, dedication uh, to hockey. Now, his uh, coaching record, again, 87, 34, 27, and 6. Lost in the first round. Uh, 87, 88, uh, 44, 30, and 6. Second in Adams, lost in the finals. And 89, again, uh, 37, 29, and 14. Second in Adams, lost in the second round. Never had a losing season as a head coach. Now, uh, ironically, he was succeeded by his old pal, Mike Milbury, as coach of the Bruins in that uh, 89, at the end of the 89 uh, campaign. Now, uh, again, this is kind of weird, ladies and gentlemen, because he was captain of the Bruins like that season. He was preceded by Wayne Cashman and succeeded by Ray Bork and Rick Melton, which goes to show the type of uh, quality players they had. See, there's some question of Ray Bork, if he would have been part of that uh, mid 1970s era, you know, we obviously couldn't be drafted, but it might have been a lot different. I think the Ray Bork in with that that core of Boston players in the late 1970s before he arrived probably would have bet Montreal with the cup. But for some reason, uh, Boston Bruins first round draft pick weren't doing too well back in the day, and uh, you know he was he was kind of the diamond in the rough. A lot of uh, announcers actually. Uh, said he was going places. Do you notice something in his game? You know when you see a player get better and better at every game he plays? And I think that deals with O'Reilly. Because you don't go from... Let's put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. When he first started in the NHL, the first full season, he had only had 27 points and 5 goals. And by that time, the 90-point season came along. He multiplied his goal total, total 6 times and his point total 3 times while uh, playing a very, very... A better defensive game but like I said never really made a mistake and uh, I, t I take in the playoffs every time he scored a big goal and you look at 78 with that 15 points in 15 games like I said uh, the playoff totals again 25 uh, counters 42 assists for 67 points in 108 games so that's a legend of Terry O'Reilly give me a like comment and subscribe Personally, I think every team in the league wanted O'Reilly, and that's why he was so hated by certain squads, because uh, they would love to have O'Reilly, like Chrissy Nylon. You look at, I did a podcast on Tim Hunter, uh, uh, Probert, all these players. Uh, they would have a rivalry against other teams, but they would love to. Can you imagine Terry O'Reilly playing, uh, playing with the Oilers uh, of that era, or the Islanders? Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen? They would be hard to beat. See, Boston at the time was always two players away from the Stanley Cup. And Ray Bork was that player, but there was still, again, one player short. And it's kind of unfortunate because if you look at the 70s, uh, you're losing, uh, you know, four different times where there were a good quality team that could have won the Cup, it was, it was pretty rough, like I said, one step away. Thanks for listening.